It was the beginning of the wiring of America. 80% of the traffic on the wires came from businesses. With the new technology, they could check credit, raise capital, and gain market information from distant locales. As one observer put it, operations are made in one day with this aid, which could not be done in two to four weeks by mail. By the middle of the century, telegraph lines connected more than 500 eastern cities. But the industry was in chaos. Competitors were fighting for priority over lines and charging drastically different rates. The entrepreneur who brought order to this chaos was Hiram Sibley. He founded Western Union and consolidated the industry. In 1948, he received his own Oscar as the father of feature films and the man most responsible for the international dominance of the American motion picture industry. He died in 1976 at the age of 103. It was a long and distinguished career, but the glory days were in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s when America became the best movie maker in the world and Adolf Zucker was center stage. He was 15 with an eighth grade education when he became an office boy at American Marconi. He worked his way up to marine operator and assistant chief engineer. He switched to commercial management so as to be, as he put it, where the money was coming in instead of where it was going out. Seven years later, the Marconi Company became the Radio Corporation of America. In 1916, Sarnoff proposed that they begin manufacturing a simple radio music box that would make radio a household utility in the same sense as the piano or phonograph. Gerard O'Neill, a Princeton physics professor, believes that it is possible to bring every person on the planet into contact with anyone else, no matter where he or she is, in a microsecond. Ever since the dawn of communications, we've been waiting for technology to catch up with our imagination. Now, that moment is here. Dr. Gerard O'Neill directed physics projects for 30 years as a professor at Princeton when he decided to start his own company. In 1983, he raised one half million dollars from private sources and launched the Geostar Corporation. The reason I started the Geostar Corporation was that uh, I'm a pilot, and I had been near San Diego just at the time of a mid-air collision that occurred in 1978 when more than 150 people were killed when two aircraft collided over uh, San Diego Airport. And I felt that there had to be a better way to provide collision avoidance uh, warnings between airplanes and got the idea for uh, the Geostar patent in the course of doing that. It took me several years to develop the invention and get it patented, but uh, that was the real impetus for it. It was, it was to save people's lives in the air traffic environment. 